Uh, so I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, first item on the agenda is to review a vote on the meeting minutes from June 26th and from July 10th, 2019. Do I have any comments on the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. Fine. We can do Second. both. We can do both at once. Yeah. Yep. Make a motion to approve both the June 26th and July 10th minutes. Second. Uh, all in favor? Yeah, aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, second item on the agenda is um, liquor license violation hearing. And we got a letter in since our last meeting, so maybe I'll let Brian sure. uh, give us a short summary. So you recall this meeting was continued from um, our July 10th meeting. Yeah. Um, at that meeting, uh, attorney tool was here. Um, and talked with the board, and the board had um, continued the hearing um, until tonight. Um, to see what would happen with the, the, the closing of the, of the business. And so um, I received a letter from July, dated July 12th from, from attorney O'Toole, um, and I'll just read it quickly. Um, it says, Dear Mr. Domina, as you know, I represent Demetrius Constantopoulos, DBA Castaway Lounge, in connection with the sale of the assets of the Castaway Lounge, including a general on-premise all-alcohol sales license to Waitley Investments, LLC. The purpose of this correspondence is to inform the local licensing authority that in preparation of closing on this transaction, as well as the transfer of the real property upon which Castaways Lounge operates at 226 State Road, Waitley, Mass, Massachusetts, the Castaways Lounge will be temporarily closed for business. It is anticipated that the closing transaction will occur the week of July 15th. However, given the local licensing, licensing authority, authorities July 1st, 2019 notice of hearing said transaction of closing may not occur until after the July 31st, 2019 select board meeting. Should you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Signed, Brian J. O'Toole. And um, since since we received this letter, I had email correspondence from Attorney O'Toole as well as um, in correspondence with the, um, with the potential buyer of the of the establishment that that they are indeed waiting for the license matter to be resolved um so i guess i guess the question is i think the question right now is a procedural one in terms of how the board wants to proceed um obviously as we know the sale is 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 on hold until um this matter is resolved and we've also heard from town council that it's his opinion that um any action will be taken by this board against the license um, really shouldn't be held against the new owners. Um, so there, so some of the circumstances have changed, and I just wanted to think. I just wanted sort of the board to discuss um, procedurally as to what we think the appropriate next steps would be based on those changes in circumstances. <coughs> and then depending on what we think procedurally, then we could get into. A bigger discussion if we want to go that route or, um, yeah. or what? Yeah. So options include things like um, basically taking no action, but kind of reserving the right to do so in the future. For example, if the sale doesn't go through and the current owners want to reopen, then we would want to reserve the right to reopen this hearing um, if that were to happen but given that the likelihood of that happening is really small it would be I mean it'd be good to like sort of just in case but to basically close the hearing without taking any further action but not give away our right to come back to this should the situation change regarding the sale Right, that's that's one of the options that town council has, had suggested. Yeah. If, if we go along with that, do we want to put any kind of time limit on that? I mean, if the sale doesn't go on for six months, say, if we want to say anything on the time period? No, I even think it's like if they if they if the current owners want to reopen, right. we've got to readdress this. Okay. And so and, and that I think would be regardless of time period if it was two weeks or if it was six okay. years, uh, regardless of the time period, if they were to reopen, we'd want to revisit. Okay. I would think. Okay, I guess that makes sense. 
I, I don't think there's any really other viable alternative because we, we can't hold the new owners right. yeah. liable for this. Um, and we don't want to be in the way of <clears throat> the transaction going through. Right. So there's no there's no really other step to take. My I guess at the same time, we don't want the new owners to think that we're treating this lightly. And if it happens, if an incident happens when they're owners, that it's going to come back to us and say, well, you didn't do anything with the prior owner. Why are you, why are you? Right. I think the fact that we have the hearing is going to make the new owner very much aware that we're watching this very closely these days. And not, not to mention the fact that um, I know that one of the, we're going to have monthly meetings with the new owners as part of their agreement with us in the first four months. And I, and I know if they maintain the current management at all, and I don't know that they will, I'm just saying that hypothetical, if that hypothetical were to come, become a reality, I, I know that that would be a conversation that I would want to have with them about you're really going to maintain or, or retain mm -hmm. an employee who perhaps was on the clock when all these things were taking place, that, that's going to be red flag to me. So I think they know. Yeah. And, and I think we can also do this without saying, hey, this is not a precedent for any old violation in the future. That, you know, uh, there's enough special situation, there's enough special about the situation that I think it w could not be looked at as a precedent okay. for uh, just any uh, general suspicion of a liquor law violation in the future. And, and you know, Fred, I think that because of the money that they're investing in this sale, or in this purchase, I should say, I think that they're going to be extremely cautious. Yeah, right. Uh, just because, uh, you know, it's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, it is. So. And when, just to clarify, when are the monthly meetings starting? Uh, the month after the day of sale, or the, or the month that they open for business? That they open. Reopen for business? Yeah. We don't want that clock to start at four. The right, yeah, yeah time to watch. Right. The four month, the four month time period, the clock starts running when they open, and the language of the conditions um, says something to the effect that the the second monthly meeting uh, <coughs> of, uh, of, uh, yeah. of the of the that the select board holds is when we have our check-in meetings with the new owners. Okay, and and the conditions in that license agreement, you know, like the. Uh, the fencing and, and the noise protection and lighting have to be addressed before they can open? Uh, I don't have a copy of it, but I want to say we gave them a little bit of time to... We gave them time to do that. It may have, yeah. I thought it was 30 days we gave 30 them, days. I, I could be wrong. I don't recall if that was from the from the transfer. It might have been 60 days or 90 days from the closing. Yeah. I don't, I don't recall. But I'm not sure how germane it is to this hearing. Right. To, to this one, I don't think it's. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, other than it may not open until it's done. But it's fine. Yeah, okay. 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 So, they have any comments on the procedural part of it? But oh, um, I mean, in terms of the. Jim, it looks like Jim has a comment. Jim, do you have a comment? I just, just wanted to add to that um, your monthly meetings, we're also going to be meeting with security once a week. So that's that's something in addition. So it won't you won't have to wait a whole month before you know something's going on. If something's going on, I just wanted to add that there's going to be monthly meet or weekly meetings as well. So this is a hearing. So you likely should let the people who came to hear and the um, and the uh, not applicant uh, the uh, an attorney for the applicant there for uh, Mr. O'Toole. Yes, see, have. Any thoughts on the so procedural? So do you have any thoughts on that? I think on the procedural aspect, uh, also being a town council as well. Um, certainly given uh, the circumstances here, we were um, uh, delayed here obviously. Um, the anticipated closing date of July 12th uh, came per the purchase and sale agreement. Uh, I did have to inform the buyers of any notices that came from the town, which we did. Um, and after viewing the um, select board meeting from three weeks ago, they did as of July 12th, but we had planned on a July 12th closing, so we closed the establishment in anticipation of that to have an orderly removal of items, um, cleaning up any last second uh, items. Um, I don't want to get into 
the allegations because I don't think that's what this is about. But certainly in terms of um, um, having a global uh, input here, um, certainly I understand uh, the board's position in terms of should the closing not go through the, uh, the, the right to revisit this. And I would also like for the record that um, the licensee, the current licensee would reserve all their rights in defenses as well. Um, well, should, should that should that right should should that should that uh, unlikely event occur? Because certainly um, we do have things to talk about the substantive issue of the um, uh, of the notice and the um, evidence that was provided. Um, but certainly, if I think it's in everyone's best interest to get this um, this transaction closed, um, the buyer's attorney unfortunately has been gone for the last two and a half weeks out of the country and doesn't return until tonight so I I don't know what the uh, position of the buyer the buyers will be here I'm, I'm hoping that if the um, the current notice of hearing is withdrawn certainly with uh, in my uh, time as uh, town council is not like this is a criminal setting where double jeopardy sets in, but certainly there's an understanding if, a tran if the closing does occur, then um, the new owners who will be taking possession of this license will not have to um, worry about that. I, I, I think there, there may be something in writing that perhaps from the board or from the town administrator that the, uh, that the buyers would want if I were in their position um, to somewhat comfort them uh, to that degree. I, I would have no problem having Brian send that letter just in anticipation of, of that yep. cautionary tale. But the chief and I will actually be meeting with the, with the proposed buyers probably tomorrow. Um, so I'm happy to we can let them know and whatever, whatever reasonably that they might request in writing, that's something that I, I would do with the board's blessing. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like basically you'd be telling people them what our town council told us, which is, and, and I don't think any time in the last hearing we were trying to hold something over the new buyers. Not at all. It was the, really the behavior of the, the current owners um, and the, how they were running the establishment. So I, that's what you say sounds completely reasonable to me. I have a question directed more to our chief. Has there been incidents since we talk about it? The latest was the June 2nd. Thank you. Has there been anything since June second? Um, not that I'm aware. Of. Nothing in the in law. There may have been a, a couple of alarms. I know we checked on one vehicle that was in the parking lot since they've been closed. Um, that they were just waiting for somebody for a ride. But other than that, there was no. But they did nothing for the last two weeks. Correct. Regardless, this would be like the outside scope of this hearing. Yeah. Right. Just noticed for a yeah. yep. sort of night. Well, uh, why don't I make a motion? Um, that okay. All right. So I move that the board close the show cause hearing without further action, uh, subject to the condition that if the sale of assets and license transfer to wait the investments LLC is not completed, the board may reopen the hearing to consider whether any such licensing violations occurred and to impose such discipline as the board may deem appropriate. And with the statement of the board that this action shall not be considered a precedent for treatment of any future licensing disciplinary matters which may come before the board. Second. Okay. With no further discussion, um, all in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. We're done with that one. Thank you so much. Well, that's writing. Yeah. What's that? I want that writing. I'll, uh, I'll be in touch with you. Okay. So next, oh, and we're we are like on time. How sweet. Um, we have uh, two public hearings on um, polls. Uh, the petitions submitted by Verizon and EverSource for the placement of a utility pole and a single pole mounted regulator. Sorry, I mean selling. There's two poles. Placement of a utility pole and 
a single pole mounted regulator on Weber Road. And then there's another one on Masterson Road to come next, but the first one to talk about is the one on Weber Road. So who's going to help us with that? Uh, I would represent Verizon. Okay. Oh, and uh, you can both yeah. be on camera. Come on up. Really? You're Verizon and you're Eversource? Correct. Outstanding. Thank I you for both being here. <laughs> yes. This is absolutely a first, I believe. Yeah, I don't yeah. believe we've ever had someone from both here. Yeah, we have the same position. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. You're okay. Welcome. Your rates just went up. Rates you pay. Yeah, okay. Um, so I've actually seen the location. I went out with a different person from the mm -hmm. source. Yeah, Mike's on vacation. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I think um, maybe I should just let my colleagues ask Please. some questions. And uh, no, I actually would be eager to hear what you saw. This is Weber. Are we started with the Weber. Yeah, we're going to Weber Road. Um, it's yeah. down. Yeah, it's there. You got a map. Um, it's down close to uh, the place where Strip Road meets there, where you turn right or left to go up Weber Road or over to um, uh, that that other road. Um, Laurel Mountain Road. Laurel, 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 yeah, Laurel Mountain. Yeah. Laurel. Um, yeah. But it's on the side. It's on the, if you were going on Strip Road to go up Weber Road, it's it's on the right hand side, um, and it uh, is really close to the intersection. There's a little bit of uh, like a drain there at the bottom. It's close to that, but not interfering with the drain. It's up on the uh, on the property. The property is kind of sloped there uh, by the road. Um, but it's not in front of anybody's house. Right? No, and it's reasonably well hidden by trees from the from the homes there on both sides of the street. I thought, um, and it, uh, uh, it that's what that, that was that was my thought at the time. Fred can right. we were careful not to deliberate. It was just one pole with uh, one of yeah. these round whatever mm -hmm. regulators. The yes, yes, this is a small regulator. This is about the, a little bit larger than normal. Um, Transformer you see on the whole continent. So it's not like as you've probably seen our three yeah. regulator banks that are large ones like we, this is not like that. What, a five gallon pail, basically. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Just for Jonathan's information, both of these are for single pole mounted regulators. Okay. Both both of these So it's not like a city of poles. No, it's yeah. not no. Yeah. a platform with the regulators. Okay. Those are coming. Yeah. Yeah, we did look at some sites for those and made some suggested changes. Sure. So that's why those are not, they have to go back in the pipeline. Okay. All right. So you guys are comfortable with, with the, the one on Weber Road? Yeah. And, and neighbors were informed when? Amy makes copies judiciously. Um, Um, what was it? Yeah, July 18th. July 18th. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. My only question on the on the notification was, I know we had spoken about the substance of notifications maybe a month or two ago. I, I the time is lapsing. Yeah. So those stickers. Are but those are the stickers. I'm wondering whether the notifications that went out are the are the consistent notifications or whether there has been enhanced information as part of these notifications or are we waiting on that? There, well, there is one there enhancement is. to the uh, notification that they put a little sticker in the bottom corner and I'll pass this over so you can read it but it um, uh, gives a person that they can contact and at every source. Yeah and it talks about that it's a uh, yeah, I mean, Single it wasn't a lot pole of, mounted yeah. regulator yeah, yeah. into contact. So Eversource had sent us these descriptions that we stick in the lower right hand corner um, that talk about it's a petition for the installation of new poles and pole mounted regulator. Oh, wait, those are the wrong ones. Pole mounted regulator for information, please contact Michael Roseport from Eversource. Um, so our, our prior complaint was that it just said for poles and wires. Essentially, it just said for poles and wires. Yeah. Right. Is, is there, and again, I, I think this is great. I'm, I'm glad it is meeting with the approval of, of you guys. I just, if I were to get this, the only other thing that I would perhaps want to see, because I have absolutely no idea what a pole mounted regulator is, nor do I really 
care unless it's gone up in front of my house. Mm -hmm. Is there the potential to put, for the Webster's definition of a pull mounted regulator, you know, is there a website that will explain or, or vi provide a visual for what it is? Because again, it's it might as well be in 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 in, in some other language. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious how, whether that whether that exists or could it. Because again, if I were to call someone, and you'd say, "Well, it's a," I'm like, "Okay, I yeah." <laughs> still have no again, idea what you're talking about. And again, like, uh, uh, like in this particular instance, like Michael's very, very helpful. He's somebody who would point you in the right direction, you know, whether you wanted to Google an image or something like that. But, you, but it is possible. That yeah. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Okay. So, if I have any further, I'll uh, just say anything else to add or ask? No. Nope. And I did. Here, a motion. Motion to approve the location on Weber Road, the Verizon Eversource Pole. I'll second that. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Okay. All right. Our second hearing, oh, we're running behind, um, is a similar unit on Masterson Road. Um, and there, I would say the pole is um, on a property that does not have a house on it at this point. Um, it was, however, going to be, if they were to put a house in, um, it wouldn't block any obvious place for a driveway. Um, it also, there was a nice tree in front of it so that even if you had a picture window in front of that house, it would be blending in with the trees. Um, the, uh, the, you might see the post at the bottom, but um, everything on top is, is blocked by a tree. And, and there's no danger in needing to trim that tree because of the siding of the pole? No, they, that's one other thing that, that came up. And the tree is back far enough from where the pole is going to be that that was not an issue. Well, um, that, that's the one on uh, Masterson. On so your, your, um, your map only shows one, one pole. There's other poles on Masterson, isn't there? There are existing poles, yeah. Existing poles. So the existing poles are not there. How far off is the, or either way is the other existing poles? So the other poles is roughly 98 feet in the toward, uh, towards Haydenville Road, and um, further up Masterson Road, it would be another 71 feet to the next pole. Well, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. 98 feet to? 98 feet back <coughs> towards, back Hayden towards Hayden Hayden Hayden. Hayden. Mm -hmm. And then um, 71 feet up towards the next pole up on Masterson. And that's planned or it's <coughs> 71 feet up? That will be the span once the new pole is placed. So it's, a, it's an already existing set of tall, up from 71 feet. The next one is. Yeah, yes. it's, it's not planned, it's already No, planned. it's already existing. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys were living there, because Matherson Road, pretty nice road. Mm -hmm. Property values. Mm -hmm. Pretty good property values. Yep. <laughs> Would you think, oh, I just lost $10,000, honestly. No, I don't think that there's any neighboring houses that are going to be affected by this place. Would you think yeah. that, Joyce? Um, that, those were specific things we looked for. Yeah, we did look for it. Was, there's it, a house yeah. up here further up. That, that it was, yeah, but it was yeah. not. But it's not going to impact that at all. Right. No. Yeah. And if a house were to go on this road, is that place we talked about behind the tree the most logical place that it would probably go? There's yeah. a bunch of trees in this area. So yeah, there's a, there's a number of trees. Of it, there's trees. Um, yeah, and mm -hmm. yeah, to various degrees of density, but uh, this I thought was fairly well placed. And and even in winter time, it's not going to be. It's an evergreen tree. Oh well, there there's a, yeah. there's a disease on those, you know, so you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, any tree. <laughs> They're all trees. Trees. Trust me, go by my house. I know. To, you know. It's called climate change. I know. Climate yeah. change. Blue spruce yes. are a thing of the past. Yeah. All right, I'm good. Thank you very much. All right. Very I'm thorough. Entertain a motion then. Here's Masters. Okay, we have a motion to approve the pole location for Verizon Air Resource on Masterson Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. So this first set is the Weber Road one. And I'm Yes, it's two-sided, so they, uh, You guys, I really want to thank you for coming together. I really, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, of course. It was so... Anything to avoid any issues. 
Now, it, is this, and this has nothing to do with the poll signing, but is our approval of these polls RR, or, or is, I don't know what the camera is. Is that going to, and I'm looking at both of you because I'm sure that a question for one of you, but not the other. Is this going to now allow the landscaping on Christian Lane at the Christian Lane solar facility to be expedited, or are these pole sightings in no way relational to that process? I, yeah, I, I don't know if these are related to that same project. Because I was on the phone recently with someone who said that a decision by this board was holding up the final work of Verizon, I guess, or Eversource, I don't know who. Typically, Verizon is the last to transfer and remove the And because Verizon still needed to go in there with heavy machinery, mm -hmm. the landscaping couldn't be done because what would happen if- It would get damaged. Right, so you don't know whether it's connected or at all. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know if these are- Can we find right. out, please? Because sure. there are a lot of neighbors who are really itching to, to have that finalized. My understanding is that we didn't ever source. Sorry? My understanding is that they're waiting on Eversource. They're waiting on Eversource. Yeah. And my further understanding from the site visits that we had is that I think those are more related to the River Road and Long Plain Road installations, not these installations. Oh, okay. I just, I, yeah. that was my point. That yeah, was sort of my regulate question. the circuit, right. sort of, so that's, in that area. That's now, still to come. The other ones, yeah. and, those, and those ones are still working their way through the system to get here? We have I not. Thought, I thought that they we visited those sites weeks before we visited I did these too. We did. And I don't recall uh, ever ha having that come up in a meeting, and I also don't remember missing any meetings, so nope. I'm pretty sure. You are correct. Um, that, uh, so there's not really a, dis we haven't had the thing come back to us for a decision. Correct. What, so I think that people might be misinformed who are telling you, oh, the board's got to make this decision first. Well, this wouldn't have been residents yeah. that told me this. This is yeah. one of the players. Oh, well, then they can. Uh, so we've got to figure that out because someone is holding something up yeah. to get that landscape. What is the address of the solar field? In the middle of Christian Lane. I don't know the number off the top of my yeah. head. It's the, it's, the, it's the about to be finished Christian Lane installation well, as opposed to the. Christian Lane, do you know who from Eversource you've been dealing with? Well, I it's often a different person each time. My favorite was Carla because I can remember her name, but I understand she's somewhere else. There. Yeah, I just <laughs> All right. Hey, we're the bright orange. Okay, that's good trying to fill in for Carla there. Um, well, the only thing on, on, on that, I know we made a comment that, well, and somebody made to us that they needed to re replant the landscaping. That's been done. And, 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 that was yeah, a and, some of those are on the way out. And, and some of them are, are, and, are and, not growing still. And that was one so, of the conversations that I had. I was, I was out having a conversation with, with uh, Nexan. And we all know those I providing are going to die. It's it just, it's too wet. So for them to get in and really finish the landscaping, they're waiting for, I guess, every source to finish their hookup or I don't know what it is, but it's, it's got to happen. This is dragging. Yeah. Well, and I'm sorry that you. I understand you guys no, are. Fine. But yeah. I'll be glad to look at the it. nearest house is 211 Christian. It, it's not only. I don't know if it's too rich, John, but I've never seen anybody water anything that's been planted there. I live next door. I've never seen anybody go by and water. If you plant new stuff, you got to water. Okay. I, I think it's more that the soil is so wet. Well, the last month or two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. But that's yeah. beyond the scope of this hearing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Um, if it's okay, we can move on to the next item on the agenda. Thanks. Have so another if, if I look into it and I, and I, and I find some answers, who should I contact? Oh, uh, Brian Domino. Yeah, Brian Domino. Uh, do you need his email? Sure. His email is? Oh, that'd be great. Uh, T-O, it's town admin. T-O-W-N-A-D-M-I-N at whaley.org. I can pull up your email. That's really fast here. Yeah. Too many emails. Too many emails, right? Thanks, guys. All right. Okay, so next on our agenda are comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. Are there any comments? 
Boris, I know you dropped off something yes. earlier. I will be the master of the creation until September 12th, but uh, at the couple weeks ago, uh, Selectman Borlaski asked me to tell you what the Granges did. Somebody was commenting a couple, a couple weeks ago that they didn't think the Grange did very much for the town. So I sat down to the computer, and we've had two Granges in this town. And in 1940, the present one was reenacted. Since the meetings are open to the public, they need to be held at the town hall. We've met there for 79 years. It's a long time. And the question was, what does the Grange actually do? Well, in the beginning, the Grange was a organization created to help the farmers in the South reorganize after the Civil War. Uh, this is a meeting for discussion of farming and new products, and this was the way of communication. In the Whateley Grange, we had a lot of farmers and that were interested in agriculture. Presently, we have a lot of backgrounds. In 2018, Whaley Grange was honored by the Massachusetts State Grange for their Home and Community Report, which I have right here, and I wrote. The monetary donations from this one little organization was $2,323. Our volunteer hours for the community was $1,494. And I told you that it was already recognized. It was also recognized by the National Grange Master and the Home and Community Service for programs such as identity theft, which our chief of police participated, and on deafness. And our time is divided up between the government, the church, Franklin Medical Center, Knitting for Bay State Premier Ward, Dictionary Project for Three Towns. Uh, we made a quilt for raffle. Uh, we also gift the Frontier Regional Band. Our members have donated scholarships for high school seniors, money for the War Memorial, to town renovation, mittens and scarf for the church, mittens tree, money for the sixth grade trip, donated our piano because there was no room in the new town hall to the church, and we also honor the veterans. We donate to our state Grange projects, but these projects were completed during my 10 years as master. And it's an it's a honor to have gotten the state award for the best home and community service report over 50 Granges. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me months to write it. Yeah. So, but that was asked by Fred in defense of what the question you know, is at one of your meetings what the Grange did. Yeah. Thank you. I think um, I'm really glad that we have these meetings televised because I think people watching will be interested. I think people don't always know. And I knew about some of these, but not about all of these. Yeah, and I went to the first meeting with Jonathan the other day, and I said, well, this is Council of Aging. Uh -huh. Well, thank you for the appointment, and I've already downloaded some ideas. Okay. Good. And I've got some of the two members. Love to love to hear hear about it. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you, Ruth, for thank you so much. responding thank you. to I guess my concern here and the question about what you actually do. So thank you so much. That's great. Yeah. Taking the time to do this and to come here to present it. So no problem Thanks. at all. Any time. Okay. That's why I can devote my time after September 12th to the Council of Asia. Okay. Um, Amy, do you well, have we're going to be busy, so. Don't. Oh, get here. Get I can tell. <laughs> Thank you. We better be. Thank you. Thank you. When is the next meeting for the COA? Or do, do they usually have us? Yes, no, we them? have to. We have to start all that out. We'll be in touch, though. Yeah. Yes, I can understand. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Ruth. Good night. Okay. Next item is all business. Um, so we need to review, discuss, and vote on any proposed changes to the host community agreement between Town of Waitley and NAP Advisors, LLC. Um, yep. I, yeah, I understand we got it back from Town Council. There were some changes. The folks at NAP have uh, signed off on all of those changes. I think just they, they gave us what we wanted. 
Yeah. yeah, at the last meeting, we didn't have the, the comments back from town council. Um, so the board approved it subject to non-substantive changes from town council and then they opened up the next morning and there's a lot of changes to it. Um, so I think it's best that let the board yeah, we should probably this take the real changes. Um, and a lot of these change. What had happened, I guess, is that NAP had provided us with a draft. Joyce and I with a draft, and um, I had sent town council theirs to review and our existing ones, and he added a lot of the stuff that was in our existing agreements and combined merged the document, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so that's why yeah. there's a lot of these changes. It's kind of follows the format of our earlier ones more closely. And I think that's probably not for the better. So the deleted paragraphs are additions that had been made but were that had diverged from our typical post agreement, so they were Oh, there were a lot a lot of whereases that didn't really need to be there. Just yeah. it was just superfluous stuff. Okay. Yep. So is this gonna be our new format for future? Um it is well it's returned to the format we had used in the past. So, so turn up. yeah, this is just yeah. for this one. Okay. I mean, they they had they had changed a few yeah. know, things in there that were just partly, but it, it was not really necessary. And, um, so, were they in agreement with this? Yes, they. Yes, they. By email, um, I got a copy of the email the, as well. That they said yes, we're we're can, fine with that. Can I ask a question then? Mm -hmm. no. In the additional, in the negative impact paragraph. Yep. It seems to be, as I read it, a very finite and clear list of negative impacts. And I want, to, I want us to be very clear that these are possible negative impacts, but again, we don't know the, the comprehensive list because it doesn't exist of possible negative impacts. So I want to make sure that these are examples of negative impacts and not because this really does read as a as a as a um, finite like list. namely yes well, so they, namely were changed to among you know additional costs in, you know including but not restricted to, to or whatever it is but i really feel that's important but they, but they got kind of a catch-all of, of potential of impacts affecting public safety, which isn't defined, or security of persons, which isn't defined. I, I mean, that that's a lot of... Well, those, are, those are broad, but I, I don't broad, mind making it more broad. Uh, yeah. With yeah, I mean, because again, as I mentioned in the discussion yeah. last time, one of my concerns is boom and bust. Yeah. 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 And, and I guess the, the other, it may be that, I'm trying to remember, I don't remember where this exact language came from, but it may be part of the law where in somewhere in the law they say what kinds of things are negative local impacts. So we may have taken that verbiage straight from the law, but I think if it, state law will supersede our law, well, right. no matter what. So if it doesn't really matter if we change that to... to and they can tell us, sorry, but no. They, they or, yeah, or the, the you know, if, if something comes of it, then someone will come down and say, well, you can't make it that broad. Right. But I, I, uh, I, I think that is a, a reasonable change, okay. not, uh, not a substance for them. But the, and a positive impact, it's an increased capacity of existing public water system. I don't think that's true. They're adding filters, they're not increasing capacity. I don't see the, the connection here. Um, well, if they add more filters, they increase the the uh, maybe the flow of the, water, but but not necessarily the capacity is set by the by the wells and the pumps. You're not you're not doing anything to change that. Well, I, yeah, it's the capacity kind of the to produce line. filtered water is changed by right. the uh, addition of the filters. Well, but certainly capacity in, in gallons that are right. not filtered, is, yeah, I mean, of course it doesn't yeah. change that. Right, right. Um, so I, I, think I, it's fair. I think it's a fair comment. Uh, right. Yeah. Personally, I, I, um, yeah, I don't worry about the, the difference 
there on this. Insulate additional filters, period, that's it. Don't add increased capacity, leave that part of the sentence off. I wouldn't object to that change. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, 3% of our natural growth cells are now in the cultivation facility. Said fish of the airline, you're like, where's the five years on the line? Because in the cutting of the sales of the previous year, I earned it. And, and I know I've said this before, you guys really are comfortable with visiting the what if, what happens if, the, I guess the logistical challenge of if we have revenue in excess of impact, there will be a way to pay that back without us saying, oh no, we spent it. I think we have to set that up. We have to set that up, but that, yeah. that, that is a pit in my stomach. Right, right. I mean, it just, my understanding is the mechanism doesn't really exist right now, but that it may exist soon, and there are some things we can do besides that, but the money won't come for a year anyway. It'll be in the special I'm, I'm concerned. So, we, so we've, got, could we, be. we've got a little bit of time before we would have that problem. Right. I mean, we'll have impact before we have money to deal with them. We know that. Yeah. Um, and we have that interim time to kind of deal with how to handle the money as well. Right. But and also the, the, the timing period of it. In terms of you could see money coming in, but the impact doesn't really last for five, six right. years. Right. Exactly. So we, we mm -hmm. should also have a policy on. Um, what that account needs to be and we don't turn away money until we know we absolutely don't need it. It might mean we have to hold on to it for five years. Right. And we get back a percentage of it. Right. Okay. Totally. I just want to make sure that we're right. all on the but same page. We, 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 we do need to make sure. I mean, it's supposed to go to the general fund, but that will really make the ledgers look odd. That's, that's a problem. <laughs> that's <laughs> which, is a, which is, I think that's the first problem to solve, yeah. is right. to get that put into a special that's account a from which we can draw for things that are in our budget that are, uh, that we can, Directly that we can charge to that essentially. Right, because we don't want anyone to see this as a feeding principle. Right, right. I right. think that's, and it, yeah, and we don't, we don't benefit that much from boom and bust. I think it's going to say that in here somewhere, we'll go to a special, no, it's not no, part of the host not, community agreement. Oh, it's not? Okay. Yeah. Right. So, but as long as we have that on record. But that is, I, I think yeah. there's an it, understanding that it, it, should be go, it should go to a separate fund yeah. where we can track. Yeah. Then Brian will figure out the best way to do that. Okay. I'm, I'm good otherwise. Yeah. So with the two um, uh, small amendments. Yeah, I can make this one. Yeah. And uh, 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 I'll move that we uh, sign the host community agreement. That, that's a motion. Good, second. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Okay. So our next item, and just so everybody remembers, we will break for a special town meeting at seven, uh, and then come back to our meeting whenever we are at. So. Um, the next uh, item is to discuss and consider next steps for reuse of the center school. And I know we were talking about uh, forming a working group to uh, come up with ideas for that in the hope that we would have some technical assistance on uh, looking into costing out various things. We, at least from the source we asked for it, we heard we will not be getting that technical assistance, right? Correct. Um, George, can, I, can I just ask that we delay this until after special town meeting uh, and invite whoever shows up for that meeting to, oh. to be here uh, to get input for an audience rather than just us talking. Oh, that's a great idea. See who shows okay. up and... and, and okay. So uh, let's put that on uh, first thing after we come back to right. special town meeting. First thing, I'm going to call, I'm calling at 7.05. Okay. So, uh, because it's not a long special time. Okay, so, well then let's move on to business then.
So um, under new business, we have some appointments, uh, some part-time police officers, Elizabeth Unitas and Robert Berger. We've got Sandy Morrison for the Cultural Council, Larry Kuttner for Solid Waste District member, Quint Dawson, Solid Waste District alternate, <coughs> Megan Wenzel for the Rec Commission, and uh, make our, I hope, the usual appointee to the Franklin Regional Planning Board, which would be Brian. So I read out the six appointments. Does anybody have um, anything to say about the folks on there? Do, do all of these have to be Whaley Town residents? They all, yes. Anyone who's on a committee has to be a Whaley Town resident. Right. Even the part time police officers? Oh, no. I, no not, not, and I think the, uh, we can appoint our town administrator to Franklin Regional Planning Board, okay. who is not a resident, but he's right. uh, got a little affiliation thing going on. No, I apologize. I, I, I was referring to the committee assignment. The other ones, yeah. I think. So, of, of the part time police officers, the two here, are, are these, one, I recognize the name as a resident. Uh -huh. The worker is uh, Elizabeth. I think she's resident. either from Sunderland or Deerfield. Um, we met her at a meeting. I'm trying to remember exactly what that was. But when she was first appointed as a part-time officer, we met her. And I'm, okay. I don't remember which town she's from. But she was from one of the four towns. And I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I spell your name is wrong. Jim pointed it out to me. Oh. U N A I T I S. Is it United? Uh, as in Johnny? Really? You don't know who Johnny is. Oh, I do. I just don't know how to call it. Nursery or secret middle name is Johnny, I guess. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Amy spelled it right on my board, but yeah. I spelled it wrong on the agenda. And congratulations on finding someone willing to serve on the record mission. I know that's all. That's she's, something. Been, she's a sitting person. She's a we sitting just, person. We were, oh, okay. I guess it was. So this is a reappointment. Yeah. Of, it was left off the list when we approved. Yeah. Most of these um, are reappointments. Re okay. I think, right? All right. Yes. Well, if we don't have any uh, further discussion on the appointees, I would move the slate, so as to speak. Uh, all of those names read for the six positions. Um, and uh, just to be specific, because it's not written in the agenda, the last one is, um, would be Brian. Yep. So that was second. a second? Yep. All, all those in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. Okay. Uh, next is to accept the resignation of Virginia Alice from the Council on Aging, and I would do so just with, uh, uh, I think we should send a letter of thanks for, for your service to Virginia. Um, she's done a lot for the town in various capacities over the years, and so I think probably a, a letter would be. It, it is with, I couldn't agree more, it is with huge regret that that I would accept this. She has been instrumental. When I became, when we created the Board of Oversight, I want to say in yeah. 2009, um, she was instrumental in helping us create a, a, a functioning organization um, that really brought that senior center back from, from the break. From the break. Yeah. Um, and I, it's really too bad. But she's been yeah. great. She has been great, and everyone in town should be. We should be fine. Yeah. So, Virginia, we know you're out there. Thank you. But you'll get a letter too. Maybe okay. even a card. Maybe even a card. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should send flowers. I don't know. Well, anyways, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Okay. So the next item is to consider delegating to a single board member the authority to review and approve bills and warrants for payments in accordance with a general law section, uh, oh sorry, chapter 41, section 56. So this part, I think I want to turn over to Brian to. Yep, so in 2016, the state passed the Municipal Modernization Act and it allows multi-board, multi-member boards and committees and commissions to delegate by a single member, um, the authority to review and approve bills and warrants for payment. Um, the default is that is that um, the vendor and payroll warrants um, really should be signed within an open meeting of that board, or, uh, board committee or commission, um, which makes it challenging in terms of our uh, yeah, when we try to get the vendors uh, the warrants processed and the checks sent out and those types of things. So. Uh, the, 
if this if the select board were to delegate the authority to a single member, it would the law does require that uh, a report of that of the warrants that are signed be provided at the next meeting. So that would likely be um, in this case it would be that summary sheet, sort of that second or third sheet in the yeah. warrant that just lists the account numbers and the amounts that are taken from that. Um, and obviously they're they're all on file with Lynn if anybody wants to to see anything. Um, but it would uh, I think it would improve the the process. Um, yeah. If if the board was willing to do that. Yeah. It From would the, not only bring us into compliance with the law. I don't want to say that, but yeah. oh. Does it have to be just improve hard. our systems? Yeah. Improve the systems, yeah. Yeah. And you can read into that as you increased choose. compliance. Does it have to be name specific or can it be a, a position? Yeah. Um I think I don't see a reason why it couldn't be. It, it might be something that we might we might want to I think, oh, the, I think it should be the board Bye. chair. Yeah, that's why I think the board chair, or if he's not available, oh. vice chair, I guess, just to have a process yeah. in place. And would... and so then every year we don't have to rename somebody right. new. It's just okay. the board. Yeah. yeah, okay. That sounds good. And then just, just, just so you know, vice chair, you're vice chair, okay. right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to be here in August. Okay. So okay. I, I need you to take a look at those in August. Okay. Thank you. Maybe it will keep us informed of when it's time to sign. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, do we need to vote a motion? I think, yeah, Probably. I think there should be a motion that. Okay. Um, okay. Then I would move to uh, delegate a single board member, the chair, to uh, uh, the authority to review and approve bills and warrants for payments in, according, in accordance with General Law Chapter 41, Section 56. Second. All those in favor? Yep. Aye. And then do you want to make another motion for an alternate? Okay. Uh, then uh, I move that we uh, delegate, should the chair not be available to do so, uh, the vice chair, uh, give the vice chair the authority to review and approve bills and warrants for payment in accordance with general law chapter 41, section 56. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. All right, Brian. So no more, no more frantic calls from us on emails from Amy about we need the no, yeah, and they gave me a key. Go figure. All right. Oh man, we are cruising through. We have seven more minutes. We could get everything done before two minutes. Yeah. On to the debate. Okay. So discuss and sign the memorandum of understanding between Franklin County Solid Waste and Town of Wheatley about participating in the Regional Household Hazardous Waste Day, which is October. Yeah, so this is paperwork in preparation for that? Yep, this, this. And the, yeah, the MOU was allows us. What's the date of it? Um, well, this, uh, there'll be a joint regional waste collection event on Saturday, September 21st, 2019. Uh, oh, that, oh, that's the hazard, it's not the uh, bulky. Right. So the bulky waste is the October. Yeah, so wait, I'm sorry, when is it? So this one is September 20th. Okay. September so that's 21st. Like, that's 21st, like propane sorry. tanks, paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, for hazardous waste. Right. Yeah, how is that be determined based on past, uh, past incidents, past cases, or how, how, how is which, which part, how is the... Well, uh, either one of them, how they determined, population or what, what's the, the... The cost? Yeah. It's, so I think they have a, I'm going to do two, there's a, the, I think they have a uh, schedule of fees for, right. the, depending on the type of item that the Franklin County Solid right. Waste District has has set so it it will it's essentially pay as our residents throw. We appropriate this, this year we appropriated twelve hundred dollars. Um, so Whitley residents can go to this one of the two collection yep. centers in yeah. Greenfield and Orange. Uh, so do we get money back or do we get money back if we don't yeah. use the all the money that's we only get invoices <coughs> for what our res for what the residents throw away. For what they oh, use. so they, they, they bill us, they don't bill the residents who Correct. use the, 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 the oh, okay. okay. And then, yeah, for the record, um, that September 21st, the collection will be at Greenfield Community College and at the Orange Transfer Station. That's the hazardous waste, so, you know, your paint thinners, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then we have our bulky waste normally a couple weeks after that. And I'm sure the date will be in the September scoop. Uh, it was in the 
the most recent scoop too. I think that date was was put. I'll need a reminder on that because I've got the paint from 2004 sitting in my basement. Oh, okay. Well, that would be solid waste. That's for sure. If it's late No, it's okay. paint would be because so. Could I hear a motion on this? If it's late text, motion to sign the MOU. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Wait, paint doesn't have to be. It's late text. It's not no. Late text. You can just pop it open, let it dry. Let it dry. Yeah. Put sand in it, kitty litter, whatever. And then just throw it in the rubbish. Yeah, it's off. It right. It's uh, yeah. yeah, things like stains. Oh, it's, it's, no, it's the, talk uh, to the lead paint. See so, yeah. Um, okay. Let it dry out or let it dry in some sense. You just spread it out on cardboard and it's okay. And the Wall Street late text. Mm -hmm. All right. So, moving right along. I don't think they would even take it, Jonathan, if you bring that body here. They have a. Well, they might not. I, I, again, I, there's a reason that it's still in my basement because I don't know if there's some problems. Oh, because yeah, on the day of, it's, yeah, I, I know. I'm all over that. All righty, so page two, people, and it's not even seven o'clock. All right, so uh, next item we should uh, go to consider selecting the FERCOG as the town's municipal vulnerability preparedness consultants. This is mandatory, so, correct? Yeah, so the distinction between this and the other um, emergency preparedness is not something we understand that well, but Brian can help us. Yeah. There's really two programs. There's really two programs that overlap. One is hazard mitigation planning. That's through that's through FEMA, and uh -huh. then there's the Massachusetts uh, MVP program, municipal vulnerability preparedness. And there's really significant overlap over both programs. And right now, the, right now the town's working with FERCOG to update the hazard mitigation plan. Um, and now we've just received the $20,000 grant to do the municipal vulnerability preparedness. Um, so it makes a lot of sense to have the same consultant doing both because we have the opportunity to merge a lot of the, the, the meetings and all the, the kind of things that we need to do. Um, and then this will make us eligible for MVP project funding, which I think this last June they gave out about $10 million. Um, uh -huh. But it, you need to be an MVP certified community to access that fund. And I think the, I think the legislation passed to create essentially the MVP trust fund or the Climate Resilience Trust Fund, which they're going to try to generate a billion well, dollars the, for the, 10 You years. mean the, the, the trust fund, the legislation that just literally passed within the last month? I believe so, right? That's separate from MVP, though. Is it? Yes. It's another pot of money, and I don't pretend to know the, the differentiation between them. Okay. It is it is a separate pot of money, but they are linked at some level. And but the important thing is, if we can get this MVP status, if that's the right way to put it, right. we're eligible to apply for that funding. And if we don't, we're not eligible. So I would move that we uh, go ahead and select the first card to get this work done and get ourselves eligible. Yeah, I would second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. We've got about one minute. Let's Can do we family, family medical leave first. Uh, we've got those two family medical leave. We'd like to consider granting a Family Medical Leave Act request from one of our employees. Um, I, I move that we do it. It's is, is there a time period on that time limit? Or how, you know, how is that determined? 12 weeks. 12 weeks. It's up to federal 12 weeks. law. Well, up to 12 weeks. Uh, yeah. Okay, 12 weeks. Starting towards the end of October. And, and we don't pay any of that, do we? It's all on I paid. think currently we don't. Okay. It's up to Sadly. You're allowed yeah. to use any leave time that you have. Right. Yeah. But we don't give any. We, yeah. Correct. I, I would. I'll make a motion to approve it, um, though I will also say that this board should have a conversation about how, with the finance committee during budget season, about how to include some level of assistance going forward. For I, yeah, I, I, I agree. I completely agree. Yeah, I'm not saying we can afford the whole, do the whole 12 weeks, but every little bit. Right. Are they covered under insurance? Well, this, this case probably won't apply. But insurance maintains. <coughs> insurance maintains. Yeah. But in this case, they're having a hard time. 
And then you don't have insurance, right. so that, that's yeah. not a concern. Yeah. Okay. But it would, insurance would continue, continue even though salary is not. Oh, okay. What does the price of this unit? That's not a problem. I'll personally in my family. We had over we always had full a full pay. Full pay. Twelve weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I heard a motion to uh, grant the Family Medical Leave Act yeah. request. Yeah. Uh, there, did I hear a second? Second. I heard a second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. That one's done. Excellent. We got a lot of our agenda taken care of, and now it's seven o'clock. So we're gonna pause the selections meeting uh, to have a special town meeting. And I'd like to invite everybody who's here, if you stay for a few minutes, there's one item that is on our agenda that we saved for you um, to discuss and consider next steps for the reuse of the center school. So if you all have any ideas about that, this would be a good time to throw them out. Literally Thank on you. the agenda is Thanks, the, guys. it reads, to discuss and consider the next steps for the reuse of the center school. And we've had this on the agenda for a few meetings now. Um, the, I mean, one of the reasons we're doing it now is because if we wait till the fall, it's gonna, it will get wrapped up in the budget and the school and everything else. Um, and summer's a little bit slower, so we might have a little time to breathe and think um, about the center school. Um, the center school is a building that uh, we have had the energy studies done. It will never be an energy efficient building. Um, it has clear historic value and probably sentimental value to folks in the town. Um, there's a lot of things it would need in order to be compliant with ADA that would be really expensive. But I don't, when I say really expensive, I don't have a dollar amount for that. Um, the front steps, you are not allowed to use them. They're too hazardous. My understanding is they may be the original front steps from 1915. 15, yeah. um, so there's the, the building would need a significant investment to be reused and we wanted to form a committee to just consider all the what are the next steps to think big think outside the box uh, everything from you know raise the building and make it a park to rehab the building and make it a museum to put in some retail to just any number of things could be there but we sort of need a little bit of brainstorming and i don't know if you have like ideas or feelings about the center school that uh, you would care to share, that would be really helpful. It's costing at the moment $10,000 a year between the heating in the winter and the insurance needed on a abandoned, not well, not abandoned, that's not the right word. Yeah. Vacant, vacant, a vacant building. Underutilized. And, um, and so that's kind of where we stand. We don't really have any preconceptions about what should happen to it. Blue sky. Yep. What did you say, Jonathan? Blue sky. It's 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 this is throwing spaghetti against the wall and see what might stick. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was, I was I was kind of offering, but I think we also sort of threw this at you, so you might need a moment to. Well, the only comment I I hate to see it torn down. I mean, I think yeah. it does have some sentimental and historical uh, value. Yeah. So I'd like to see, you know, it'd be nice if somebody took it over, refurbished it, and used it for something, but uh -huh. obviously that may not be cost effective, yeah. so I don't know, but that's... What do you think about the land that about. it's sitting on? That parcel of land right in the center of town that has, perhaps from the planning board's point of view, problems with frontage and that sort of thing, um, but as a place for gathering seems to me to be kind of really I, I thought the planning board was, I, I thought I heard at one of the meetings that they were talking about maybe possibly doing some uh, special rezoning yeah. that would allow something to happen in that building right and that came up at the town meeting yeah. that got approved that rezoning got approved that got approved yeah so that so that they have flexibility on things like parking exactly. and so on um, but for example um, I heard that you know if the land goes into private hands, that that just the land it's sitting on is kind of valuable as a public space. So whether it's public or private, I don't know if 
their feelings on that. You can keep the building, but if it goes into private hands, then you lose that parcel. Um, and I think, the, yeah, I certainly have mixed feelings about that, but that's, uh, um, you can't have everything, right? <laughs> you know? and, and again, this committee, the creation of this committee is so that we don't make decisions <coughs> in the post haste, that we really, it's, it's thought through. Um, I, I very much want to see someone with real estate development experience on this committee. I want to see someone, very much someone, who has a sense of the market for a, build, a historic building in the center of a town that gets a fair amount of auto and bicycle traffic, et cetera. Someone who really, you know, because no, nobody in this room can say, well, I know that somebody would want to buy it, because we don't know. We don't have that skill set. So this, this committee is supposed to be formed both for town passion, if you will, but also for skill sets to look at us and say, you're nuts, or that's a great idea. I'd like to just, uh, two things. Uh, one is what, what we went through with the Blue School. Brian and I were involved with Frontier when the Blue School was advertised, and when uh, prospective buyers came to look at it, there were three buyers, three organizations or whatever that came to look at the school. One finally finally bought it, a developer that was still working on it. Another one was a realtor that was probably going to flip the property, buy it, put it on the market and flip it. Another one was a uh, uh, property management company out of either Northampton or East Hampton that was looking at, at doing something with it. That was it. That's all the interest we got for that building. Uh, I think that it may be a good idea to have, have a committee look at, at what's the best uses, but I, I think rather than restricting the type of uses right now and, and restricting the kind of uh, proposals we're going to get for use of the building, that maybe we should just not say what we want the use to be and see what proposals we get and then have a committee respond to their proposals. Because otherwise, if you say a certain type of, of development we want there, that's all you're gonna get and you're limiting it and it doesn't get as much exposure as if you didn't have any restrictions on type of development. We can always turn down any kind of development we want, but I think just to see what all the options are, what the market is willing to bear. I mean, it's there's properties all around that sit idle for years, houses even, that are maybe better shaped than that that sit idle. Uh, there's no big demand for that, and I think to restrict it now and come up with, with a few potential uses that we, we want to see there is really limiting the market, the availability of people to, to respond. I, I think uh, we could should look at, you know, the, the other example of, of of what what another town has done if you read in the paper I think it's Hadley is trying to sell their old fire station and uh, I don't know if there's a uh, church with it well they got a developer to respond to and make a proposal but I don't think they limited what they wanted to say in that building now it's come back to part of the land to want to make it a park and still struggling with what to do with the building but uh, you know, they didn't get overwhelming response for that. It was a huge building to do something with. I don't know if it's another condition. I, I think, that, uh, I, I guess my feeling is that we should, uh, you know, if the board agrees, see what's out there, what kind of responses we get first. Yeah. If nobody responds, then we've got to decide, well, what do we do? What does the town do with it? Do we, yeah. do we uh, try to maintain it in some condition or do we level it? and make some kind of park uh, yeah. versus, you know, if, if there's some interest, then maybe we can work with a developer. If we're not fully on board of what he wants or what we want, there's some negotiation, but just to restrict it, I, I, I think it right. is really short-sighted right now. Uh, and it would also be probably short-sighted to restrict it to only developers who want to make money off of the site. Well, right. I think that's, uh, it, it, we can't, if we're looking for proposals, 
we've got to be looking for proposals of all kinds. Of anyone, that public, private, private, whatever. Yeah. But if you, you know, if you have a committee now, you're going to every committee person possibly has got their own idea of what should be there. I don't know what you do with that. You would advertise for proposals for, say, eight different uses. I, I don't know. I, I think it's just getting too restrictive. My, my only, I get what you're saying, Fred. My only concern is that, and, and I'll use the, the public option as my example, because someone from the private sector would have the, the wherewithal to figure out what's possible for that building and whatnot, because they'd yeah. bring in advisors and, right. and consultants, et cetera. But if town residents, said, you know what, that building is so important to, to me because I went to school there, or whatever it is, that they don't have the resources to say, I want to make that, uh, I don't care what. Okay. And so then, I, I think that forming this committee with specific skill sets can be an asset or, a, or, a, or a, a, a reference point for someone who has questions about what's possible and what's not. Because again, town, if, if, if the former principal wanted to save it to make a pottery studio out of for the town, and I'm just hypothetical, <laughs> we don't know what, whether it would do that. job. What's yeah. that? What do I do yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's my that's only, I just think simultaneous yeah. But, but I, I don't know if a, if a committee can can right. can actually do that. Right. If you're well, going to get this, then let Ellen's go in here. I I agree with John. I think um, if you're going to have a committee, you should ask the committee to start from scratch. Have people, like you said, people who know something about real estate on the committee, then bring the ideas to you. Yeah. And but then also the people who are familiar with nonprofits, people who are exactly. familiar with parks, people exactly. who are familiar with urban, or the, well, maybe not urban planning, but, but the regional planning, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. but, but the thing is, because uh, you know what, excuse, uh, you know yeah, what's right. going to happen? The same thing that did with the with the um, uh, town hall. You're going to have people come and say, "What? Right. You're not going to be happy." Yeah. If I think I think. It, I, I, I would think people would want to be involved. But I, I think that it may be true, but, but the difficult part is for the committee to, to have an idea of what people, what do people want to invest in? I mean, it costs money to remodel. And mm -hmm. It costs more to remodel than, than to level and start new at times. Absolutely. And, yeah. and not only that cost, but also what is available for funding and grants. Well, they could uh, work in, they can work with you. Well, that's that's right. I, I don't know how a committee would get into that because it's, you're you're not involved in, in financing usually projects. It's right. really developers or real estate agents say, right. you know, banks that get into that. But you're going to have the community's ideas. There's like like there's probably a lot of ideas out there that yeah that. Unless you petition the town and find out, you're not going to know. Yeah. Well, I mean, and going back to the, the town hall idea, yeah, you know, we had lots mm -hmm. of committees for years and years and years talking about what to do. Yeah. And nobody came to a meeting. I should say nobody. The usual people came to the meeting until we actually put a proposal with money on the money. table, mm -hmm. and then we filled the school cafeteria to the gills of standing room only yeah. with people who were angry that they'd never been asked what yes. they want to do with the town hall. Yes. Not that there was a newsletter in the town that didn't publish, you know, 43 articles about it consecutively and other issues. This right? won't be as, as yeah. big, do you know? Well, it's not as big of an area, area. but it's, yeah. But yeah. I, 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 think, um, I think you need to switch have a committee. Well, let me see the other the other part property that the town has been that has uh, has ownership of and hasn't done anything with recently is is the Demile property. Yep. Uh, that was that was on the market for years with various realtors and it started at a high price and it went down low price without any real interest or or, or offers on, on the property. There was no restrictions to my not of what was going to be there, what you could put there, is it residence or commercial or whatever. There's no restrictions, but no, nobody came forward wanting to buy it, even for reduced prices, really cheap prices. There was no interest. And 
there's nothing sentimental. No. Well, uh, okay. And but, compared to a school like John said, that probably most of our residents have gone to, or their children have gone to. But, but I, I, there, there's merits of the committee, but I, I think there's also merit of, of if, if you don't specify a use today, to see what, what, what interests there are. Right. People that, that don't live on the street, don't live in Waverly, what is the outside interest for that property? And we can't, we can't tell that by organizing a committee amongst ourselves. I think you need to reach out beyond that and to advertise what, without any specific use gives us a feeling of, of, of what kind of development. The committee and, can't and, do that? And I believe, I believe that I said simultaneous. That, well, that again, the private developer will have the resources to do that type however, of legwork themselves. But somebody from town doesn't necessarily have those resources. So this committee could be a, a, a vetting committee. It could be a, a, a resource committee. It could, it could be a, a committee that has its expertise leveraged for people like Don Skrowski who wants to create the pottery Place. Don's, that's right. Okay. You know, but, 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 but what's that? Don's oh, Potter, right. right. But without that resource, you're putting the town people who, who aren't the private developers at a, at a disadvantage because they don't, again, they just, there's no way they have the capacity that someone, uh, someone else would from outside. So I, I'm saying we put it out there, we make it, we make it known, we make it available we get mass development in here to help with the process because they would be happy to help us with this thing. You know, from, from the local regional people, not the people who put the thing out to bid, and do it simultaneously. Well, okay, now you're changing the story a little bit. No, I'm not. Well, no, we're listen. trying to expand it a well, little bit more from, from just letting someone commercial come in and see what they can do to make money. I think that's very limiting. And what I hear you describing, it might not be what you're describing, yeah. but what I hear you describing is, let's see if anybody's interested in buying it. Well, people would be interested in buying it or trying to make money off of it. Well, not necessarily. Right? Well, uh, people, I'm, this is what I'm hearing it's, from you, that nobody wanted to buy DeMaios. But yeah. it, I don't think we have to limit proposals to things that will earn money for, especially for somebody else. I, I'm but not something saying that. that could be an investment for well, the town, yeah. given especially the hiking paths that are probably coming in. And I, 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 I took well, Fred, what Are you proposing putting it out for sale or asking for proposals? I don't well, understand. Well, for sale, or, well, I, I, I guess for sale to see what we, we get. And, and I, I guess I, well, I'm not looking at it as, an, as a money maker for somebody. It, it's more of what kind of use do these people want to make of the building. And then then if they're proposing a use, then we get into the money part of it. Well, how much do you want to offer for it? Well, somebody could take and say, well, I'm going to do Don's pottery in that building yeah. and buy the building. And then say, you know what? It's not going to be cost effective. I think I'm going to tear it down now and I'm gonna build my house here. Well, we, we'd have to pull restrictions uh, or conditions uh, in the offer. Uh, there, there's one going now for, uh, Athol has got two schools to advertise in the paper they're selling. They put four or five conditions on okay. to sell on the property. I just wanna... So we could put that on there or you could put deed restrictions if, if it wasn't, uh, if you're selling, if no development within two years, three years, the, the, the sale is void. I mean, people will buy it saying they want to they want to build and do something but then years go by and nothing happens well we've we got to put language in to avoid that situation as well I could see this building being any number of things but again I don't have the expertise to know whether it viably could be it could be and I and, and DeMeo is not the same because it, it, DeMeo is not in the center of town it's not prime real estate as George points out there are just a number of things yeah. never mind the sentimentality of it and, and the blue school is not, a, not a, a, a fair comparison either because the blue school isn't close to being as attractive as, as the center school is. So. Well, I suppose that. Uh, I'm, but, I'm guessing we're going to get letters on this. <laughs> Maybe, but. <laughs> I know, but. So I guess my, so, so my point, it could be a restaurant. It could be a, yeah. it, it could be apartments. It could be um, you know, shared office space, a co-working space for startups. It could be so many things. 
but we don't know. It, you know, there's somebody in town who wants yeah. to expand the cemetery there. I'm not, and I'm not yeah, taking a value judgment. That it's has just, been proposed. There are, there are people who want that. So there are town interests and there are yeah. private development interests, and they're all perfectly good pathways, but we should do it simultaneous. We need to do it expeditiously because we're, we are spending a good chunk of change on that property. But why not, why not set, set a system up where the sky's the limit as opposed to it's, it's, it's Let's see what more we can get on the real estate market. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it could be the Franklin County Museum for I don't care what. I mean, yeah, who knows? <laughs> For Don's okay, pottery, so come on. Yeah, video, <laughs> video, 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 video development. Is that what's the latest? I'll put up you too bad either. <laughs> a pub. A pub. Uh, a pub. I, would, I would love that. <laughs> yeah. I would, I, would, I would buy it and do it myself. Yeah. If you want to do it simultaneously, I, I, I guess I can accept that. But, but not to come out and say we're looking for it. These three types of businesses there, and see what we no. do. I don't oh, think no, we I don't, and I don't think I, I don't we don't want any businesses if, there. If we had a committee first, and and they came up, I, I hear the committee was going to. Well, we didn't decide what the committee was going to do, but some thought of the committee coming up with options of what kind of development would be there. No, the okay. committee again. The committee was well, intended to to share with people what they felt were viable options based upon sewer, based upon infrastructure of the building, based upon the 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 the, the back guano that's in the you know, whatever it is, they're gonna be able to tell yeah. people Ooh, that's gonna be hard here or not. It's not about the type of business. Or just think or oh. just think outside the box. What could we as a community do with this? What could we as a, a you know, given its location and so on, what could we do if we sold it? What could we, you know, what would what would happen if that were the, the, the way to go? What are kind of the pros and cons there? What if we kept it as town property but did something with it other than have a building that doesn't do anything? Um, what, what are those possibilities? And it might be that people will come up with ideas that would be, you know, less expensive than a complete renovation and something that would still serve the the town well in our own economic development. Um, it doesn't have to be a for-profit business to be economic development. Right. Can be, but it doesn't have to be. Well, yeah. I, I'm not saying it so should be for-profit. It's, it's something that's going to benefit the town in, in one way or another, how we, however we look at it. Like, for example, if we, what, what if we had some people who did a lot of cycling? There's a lot of cyclists that go by. There's going to be some more hiking paths. I don't know if those will also be cross-country ski paths. Like if you had that sort of stuff in your, those sort of resources in your town, well, what's missing that could maybe go at the center school that would help kind of solidify Waitley as a destination for that kind of tourism? Right. Um, I don't know because I don't do a lot of biking or winter skiing, but that's something that I think Somebody knows the answer to that. Well, I know a lot of it. Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah so we're feeling particularly okay. like a <laughs> so. lot the fonts of knowledge on this. But yes, ma'am. Do we have any estimate about what that property could be worth? I mean, we're not looking for a real estate estimate. I mean, what the assessor's value is probably in the three hundred dollar range, three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And then you're talking a lot of money to restore. Yeah. I mean, it has to meet with um, all the American disability yeah. codes and everything. And so if it's going to be a public building, yes. yeah. 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 I'm guessing there's asbestos in the building. That's a guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It, it, it would be an expensive thing. But again, that, that all that information is what this group is supposed to do. Right. I, I think a committee is a great idea. And I don't know whether it should be done simultaneously or not. I mean, I, I think you've got to start you know? somewhere and a committee with. No, yeah, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> Thank you for asking, Joyce. Um, I've done, been there, done that. So we just um, raised your name off the list. <laughs> thanks, Brian. I spell Skrowski. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You know, and give the committee like a certain amount of time that you know you, we need a lot of ideas. <clears throat> We'd like to. Put this committee together and just get a lot of ideas and, and get people talking about it. Right. 
Well, they'll talk. Yeah. It's, it's a small yeah. town. Yeah. They'll, they'll gripe one way or the other. So. Maybe they'll create an RFP for, for Bill. Uh, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I think Fred's right that we, we, we need to figure out what potentially someone might want to use the building for, but it should be the sky's the limit. And, so, right. and that's why I just think right. I, I'm, I'm less interested in names, I'm interested in skill sets, and then we fill in the skill sets right. with people who can yeah. satisfy those needs. And if it's only three people from Waitley and five people from outside Waitley, so be it. We need skill sets. I agree with it. That's, that's what I propose as well, skill sets, well, and names, but uh, I see what you're, you're proposing. Yeah, I, I agree with, with, with the skill sets. Uh, I don't know whether all of them are, would be residents of the town or not, but I don't know. We can decide, but uh, do we do we do we have someone who, who understands, you know, market demand for for? Di I don't think we do in town, I, but I, we might. Where's the real estate? Where's but not real estate, but but I don't. I don't you know, know, is there a demand for, you know, whatever? A pub. <laughs> well, there's a, like I mentioned that apartment managing company that looked at the blue school. You know, I, I don't know if you call that real estate development. Don, you and I are going to go to business on pub. Apartment development, but. Uh, and pub and pub and uh, distillery. Pub and pottery. Oh my God. Yeah. Pub and pottery. Make your yeah, own It could pubs. be one of those, yes, it's, it's, the, it's the, it's you know those wine and, uh, wine, wine and painting places? Yeah. Wine and pottery? Wine and pottery. Beer and pottery. A little bakery we could use to call common graves on it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. So I, I, I guess I don't know how to move forward on this, but Madam Chair, I, I would like to figure out how we move forward. I don't know whether the uh -huh. lists of people are. Again, I. Well, um, I think I've got the one that you you sent in a list of skills. Yeah. Fred sent in um, uh, some some of the match. Uh, to some extent, the skills you wrote as well, but his is more broken down by kind of uh, well, historical commission should send someone, the finance committee should send someone, uh, someone who's got experience as a remodeling contractor or a building contractor. Uh, one of each is on there. A realtor, someone involved in housing development who knows something about that. Volunteers. Um, uh, someone from the select board and Brian, of course, because Brian has to do everything. That's why he makes the big bucks. I had uh, uh, brought in a list of names. I just read them at the meeting. And um, I'm, gonna for, I'm gonna forget those. Um, but the one I remembered the most, she's sitting right next to Dee, and I said her name as if she wasn't in the room. Um, but um, Anne, Anne, yes, Anne Robleski. Um, and uh, oh, or Judy was here. We should have asked her. And Judy Markham was one of the names. And uh, I feel like there was. Uh, yeah. Stan Cordillas. Stan Cordillas. Yeah. He's Cordillas. just a. I mean, he, he travels. He goes around. He sees things, and he would kind of bring in ideas of you know I saw in such and such place what they did. And Jane Gripko, Judy Markham, Ann Barker. Could yeah, I, could Jane Gripko. Yeah. Could I just, well, Ann Barker would be a small business person, local, and might have some idea. Uh, maybe the folks from the Waitley Inn would be uh, another small business that would be uh, interested in uh, I, I guess sorting I, out ideas. I would stay away from, I guess, drive the butters. I guess because that you get some bias from there if the property is next to you. Uh, Maybe to get this going, why doesn't Brian put a combined list of, of what we've got here, names, and if Jonathan wants to identify yeah, names for, for his, and, and put it on our, our website, not the, not the list, but uh, a request on our website that we're looking at organizing a committee to look at it and see what interest we get. So see if anybody's interested in being a member of this committee, Let, let's ask we get uh, we may be surprised who's interested yeah. in it who has that and whether they have expertise to match these yeah. skill sets maybe as well maybe a little uh, front page article in the scoop for well, some can do that yeah i don't see we, we have to decide tonight who should be on right right i don't want to yeah i don't want to decide yeah. tonight. so to 
right. make it open uh, and yeah. see, what, see what we get. So can we give ourselves a deadline that we'd like to, by the end of September, have this committee formed and generating ideas? Because that would give us the scoops coming out the first week of September, probably this around the 7th or the 8th-ish. Um, then uh, we've got a handful of names. There's some people we can contact in advance. We can get the word out there. Someone would have to be tasked with writing that article. I, I know the editor. I think uh, she could probably pawn that off onto somebody unsuspecting in the back row, perhaps, to help make it an interesting thing that you know the people would Keep jazz, they'll jazz it up for me. But I, I think. Brian would, would also need some information on what, what when he puts his announcement out, what's the, what's the role of this committee? What are we looking for the committee to do? Brainstorm, to evaluate, or to review, I, or, or what, what, why, why don't I do this? Why don't I offer to, because I just did it for, the, for, for, for a senior center thing, why don't I put a charge together that we can, that we can noodle? Uh -huh. A charge would be, Four lines. Just this is this is the, the domain, yeah. the jurisdiction of this yeah. committee. And I'd like yeah. it to be really focused on ideas and not on cost estimates. Absolutely, right? Uh, right. Absolutely. Uh, ideas and, and probably cost conscious, but let's talk about what all the ideas are, and don't worry about whether the idea is unrealistic for cost purposes. Those will get shot down late at a later date. But this is not a job description. This is a, a committee charge, and and I will, yeah. and then I will give it to Brian. Brian can then distribute it to you two, so we're not breaking the ridiculous right. open meeting laws. And we can comment on it and talk to it again if we need to. Discuss. Or then you can share your red line with with Brian. You guys. <coughs> yeah, I guess yeah. Share the red line. But, I don't wait. Sorry. Edit the document in red line. Oh, try to change this. Okay. Yes. But uh, okay, that's one action. The other thing is is what do we what and when do we market this building? I mean, should we ask Brian to develop a, an RFP for sale and use of the building? I think so. not until this committee has had the chance to to talk about it. Well, to talk about all the possible ideas. I, 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 what do you put in the RFP? Well, you don't get specific in the RFP, and I don't think we want to get specific in the RFP of, of the uses of the building. Uh, I think, you know, this could go, I think like John's was saying, hand in hand or simultaneously. What would the blue school RFP look like? I don't remember now. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of generic. It was, it was pretty done by generic, wasn't it? Generic. Well, it was done by Frontier's attorney. Frontier. Was, okay, but I mean, we yeah, have that. It's temperate still. Yeah, it probably wouldn't use that one. And, and you've got you've got one I get, I gave it from the Ethel that had one for their schools. One of the things that, that that's supposed to be placed on RFPs are any conditions that conditions, that the yeah. town foresees imposing on the uh, yeah. on the purchaser. So I mean, there's options in terms of you know what happens with the milk bottle. Does the town you know maintain an easement on it? Does the town just sell the building and hold the land? Does the town take it? keep an easement over the land to keep it for a public purpose there's a lot of you know, things that can be done is there going to is there going to be I don't remember who talked about it but is there going to be some sort of development agreement that says if you buy this you tell us you're going to put a pottery shop here and if you don't put a pottery shop here within two years then the town has the right to to take it back is there some sort of reverter clause or there's, there's a lot of stuff to right. and, and those are things that would be really helpful for the committee to if you had a person on the committee with that skill set and Brian would be on the committee fortunately enough and I get in Fred I want to I mean I, I understand the calendar is not our friend on, no, on this thing but, but yeah. to, to at least start that or get Brian to yeah. off a draft or something what that would look like I think a, a draft RFP to present to the committee is a wonderful idea I mean it's August so no one's gonna read the stupid thing until Labor Day anyway right well you're not looking until into September for a, a committee well, it could be and the first thing we, pre we present to the uh, committee, so that it is a tour. Right. sometime, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can, yeah. But I, yeah, I wouldn't know what conditions to put that on. I would not. At this point, anyway. I, w I so would not. That might be another charge to the committee that, uh, hey, what are the things we ought to be considering well, for, 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 
for that. For you know, their the draft, they could work on the draft. Uh, yeah. The, RFP would the, buy, the, yeah. the town of Great Barrington had this very thing where there was an historic property, much larger, and they went through this whole process. What are we going to do? What are the restrictions? Is there a is there a, 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 a pullback clause? All those kinds of things. So I, I I really want someone from mass development on this, and I want someone with commercial real estate experience on it. Well, then and, and so, you'll be able to recruit. Well, uh, let's hope. And, and it's because the academy went through all this, didn't they? And what it sat for what years? And now the finally yeah. some activity, I think. But right, and and, and I don't think we're going to get this solved in three no. months. No, I think I think you know Ellen's got a good point that it's it may be more like the time scale for the town hall, and I hope it's not like 15 years going back to like. The late 90s when the first things were uh, so maybe first two, meetings. 2010 to 2014. Right. Yeah, but but they, but they were meetings. I remember my first year in Waitley. There were meetings about how we're going to renovate the town hall. Right. Maybe we so, should try for the next annual town meeting and see what we can um, develop by then. So what's yeah. the what's the charge? Oh, no, I'm going to do the charge, and then the charge. we're going to do the skill set. Yeah. And we're going to have this committee done by, because I think we should finish this, otherwise the people you invited to stay right. are never going to stay for another meeting yeah. again in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So All right. Don and Ellen are both on this committee, right? No, uh, second. <laughs> oh, I can't second things. You can't second. Okay. Bob, you guys can be my kitchen cabinet. Okay, so so you're going to work on... We will be. Okay. We'll I can't help it. <laughs> I'll give you a plenty of box. I know. Okay. And, and Brian will work on a draft RFP for, for the what, end of September, I guess, sometime, yeah. right? To be presented no, at no. to the thing, to yeah. the form committee. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good night. All right. Good night, you guys. We got two more things to knock out here. I think we can be out by eight. Yeah. All right. So back to the new business to consider and sign the order of taking for the previously laid out portion of Poplar Hill Road. I'll make this even easier. So we do not have the. Um, we do not have back to sign the waiver of damages for the order of taking, so I wouldn't feel comfortable asking the board to okay. sign the order of taking without those in our possession. Damn, we're not gonna be able to take that property. Okay. And again, this is for that short extension of the road. Yeah. That, that oh, okay. okay, so next meeting. All right, so next meeting. It'll have to be, yeah, we have a, okay, well, that's, meeting, I it needs to happen in August because we have a time Right. Uh, yeah, and I, and I want to discuss the August. And, and that's, I, I assume that's coming up okay. under town administrator updates. Is something about meeting schedule? We will have to. Uh, but first, the, uh, the sprinkle project at the elementary school is finally completed. Um, so all of those sprinkle heads have been replaced and it is back in working order. Good. That took forever. Um, I just wanted to close the loop on this. Um, Joyce had sent an email out um, about the FCC having a yeah, yeah. draft, uh, a draft order of, in terms of the peg access um, yeah. and sort of the, the the gutting of that funding, the proposed gutting of that funding. Um, so I had uh, drafted a letter similar to the one that the board had approved when we submitted. Yeah. It for uh, the original comments, and I had submitted that um, to the FCC um, as part of that. Um, we'll stick up. We'll stick on FCAT here. We're getting. We're inching closer to be being able to go live from this building. Now we yeah. need to buy. A, um, it's a modulator, right? Right. Um, it's a modulator, and it will uh, cost between two thousand and three thousand dollars. And the proposal is to pay for that out of the peg access funding that's about to be gutted um, we have about well, some, somewhere around the ballpark of forty five thousand right. dollars in that account um, yep. so if you guys are okay we'll spend quickly buying that um, so we have the library um, accessibility improvement project that's going on that's being designed and the municipal ADA improvement grant was just released uh -huh. with a deadline of October 8th. Oh. Um, one of the requirements of that grant is that the town needs a self-evaluation plan and a transition plan. Oh. I was able to cobble something together for the, the, the 
town hall. This is one of the grants that we applied for and didn't get. It was evaluations dated back to 1984. There was something from 92, 98, 2004. It, it wasn't a true sort of plan. Um, so the library, the library trustees are interested in applying for this grant. And I guess my question, I, I think we could do a, a, an acceptable self-evaluation and transition plan in-house. Um, I heard back from the Mass Office of Disabilities as to sort of, the, they have some templates and some checklists that we could do. Um, and the, li the library trustees are willing to assist with that. This would be all of our town-owned buildings. Yeah. But it would take, I guess the question is, should I be using some of my time and resources to make that happen? I think it will improve the chances of, of that grant yeah. happening. Um, it's a very competitive grant, so obviously yeah. I can't guarantee anything with 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 grants. But but it would be it good would, to get. It would take some time. Yeah. How much were we talking for the grant? How much money? It's a maximum of two hundred fifty thousand. So what would we be asking? They typically for? don't award grants of two hundred fifty thousand. So what would we be asking for? Um, uh, the preliminary cost estimates, I think, were in the ballpark of. 130? I think between 130 and 130,000, 150,000. Well, so the full, um, uh, full project you're looking at. But you, you, look, you look at the awards from the prior, the prior round and they were smaller. Uh -huh. I think North was one larger city at 250,000, but the other ones were on the magnitude of 50,000 and lower. So I, I don't think it, We'll pay for the whole thing. Yeah. Well, what are our chances of getting a grant? I mean, you've got to apply if you I right. guess first, but yeah. well, if you have this, your chances are better. I know the, ch the chances would be better if we have a self evaluation plan. Our time, yeah. to, yeah. Your your time to do that, but it will, it will take some time. Right. And it, will this at, at this time, it's happening kind of during this early time of the year. We're not yet into budgets yet, but it's going to start getting busier in September. Is, I mean. Uh, what would fall off your plate if you did this, do you think? Um, like what might get pushed aside? The center, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's a good question. Well, I, 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 I think a lot of it would be, um, I think there's time for it. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that, that I think needs to be addressed, I think there's a lot of stuff for the personnel policy. Uh -huh. um, that was kind of the next yeah. big thing um, we're looking at. And then there's stuff that, that's coming up that I don't think can get pushed in, in terms of helping the water, mer the water right. merger project along right. um, and doing a lot of these yeah. procurements that need to be done. Um, yeah. But I think if, if I could leverage the assistance of Jim Ross and the very and some of the library trustees, I think collectively we could. Okay. I, guess my, done. I guess my question for you, Brian, is do you think it's a good use of your time? You're better not you have better knowledge about what your priorities need to be to make this town click better than us sometimes. So do you think it's a good use of your time to you or do you think that you have more important priorities that you need to, to attack? I think it's a good use of our time because I don't think this grant program is going so once we have the, the self-evaluation plan and the transition plan, I think it's, I think it's, could be an annual grant submission. I think we can find things around town that we can apply for. Yeah. Um, so from that sense, I think it, it's worthwhile. Okay. Well, there, there, there's a couple of things that, that on my mind that are, we've started initiatives but haven't finished and I think it's time maybe we need to devote more time on is one is the capital improvement planning committee we're looking at restructuring and and getting more involved with that committee before budget season so that would be this fall and the other thing is remodeling our offices here finishing the remodeling or, or starting remodeling uh, we were delaying that until the safe or the vault was done and <clears throat> stuff moved into the vault. That's been completed. Uh, so I, I guess we, we 
shouldn't forget about that. We're not, this isn't our final layout for town offices right here. There's, there was proposals to expand over there and make it more efficient, more useful, uh, more private for some, some offices that I think it, it's time we, we seriously look at that. Money was set aside in a, not this town meeting, the town meeting before, this money set aside some 115, 120,000 set aside to, to do that, to finish the remodeling. So I assume that money is still there somewhere, right? There is, I think there's around 94, 95,000 dollars left. Is it that, or whatever, okay. Um, it, it hasn't been a big, it hasn't been a big push to do it because it really operations have, have been pretty, have gone pretty well in the space they are, but I know that there's a desire to for especially the offices on this side. Yeah, right, for more to privacy have, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that process would, it, I've been, Amy and I have been working on it a little bit. It, it's identifying sort of what the, what the, the, what those temporary walls will be made out of. Right. And then it would be a procurement to have a contractor come in right. and make those changes and then outfit those offices. We, we have a pretty good idea of what the layout should be. In terms, of, in terms of our right. needs, but yeah. I think we're waiting to hear back from somebody from Conklin Office Furniture because okay. they do design layouts and okay. materials like that. So yeah. um, I, I do think that that should move forward, and I, I'm confident that it will move forward. Okay, and Amy is with us until what, October sometime? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so the extent of the that, I assume she'd be working on some of those things with you until then. Hope so. Yeah. Uh, okay, but after that, is it, is it, right. is it going to be manageable for you? I, I guess. Well, she's going to have Janet. Yeah. I think. Well, right. I think Janet. But also, the, the deadline for this is October eighth. Right. So, okay. so it's, it's going to be done. It'll be done. It's a work kit. Okay. Yeah, I think especially if you can make use of the library trustees that you've got some able. Um, well, I don't know, able body isn't quite the right word, but some able bodied people to step up and make that not as big a burden. I think that, yeah. And if you think it's also a good use of your time, then I think that's. Uh, I, think it, I think the same with, with hazard mitigation and the MVP yeah. plan. It, it goes along the same lines of if you don't have these things in place, you're not eligible. You're not even in the door to apply for grants. So let's um, get in the door. You at least want to get in the okay. door. And okay. then they can say no. All right, let's do it. Okay. okay. Um, in terms of the veterans uh, memorial project there, the redesign project, um, the committee that's the veterans committee that's working on it has uh, um, uh, they haven't hired them, but um, they have somebody from Snow's Landscaping that's willing to work with them um, to put together a final well. A, preliminary final design of what they envision that space looking like and then we can that could go out to a public hearing and things like that. With the idea that it would that funding for that would would be on the upcoming annual town meeting. And the construction of that would happen in the spring. Okay. Um, it, their their idea is still to try to pursue CPA funding for that. Okay. But they couldn't meet the summer deadline because they really didn't have the plan and the cost estimates. Their next their next step is to really have somebody with knowledge of CAD and really put, the, put something together, um, get cost estimates for that. So that's moving forward. Um, the annual source to sea cleanup, that's when there's a bunch of volunteers that clean up the rivers. Um, that's happening September 28, 2019. Uh, the town in the past has been willing to dispose of whatever they pull out of the ravine by her. And they pull out a lot of stuff. Right? Yeah, they, pull, they pulled out pretty much most of a car last year. <laughs> Which isn't um, good for a riverbed. Yeah. That's, uh, Just my, so we're clear. My okay. understanding is it's not really good coral reef. No. Or a swimming uh, pool yeah. either. No. <laughs> um, so that's happening September 28th. If you guys know of any other locations in town uh, that need a cleanup, that's sort of a brook or waterway, um, you can email me. Yeah. Because okay. they were asking if we knew of any other spots. Yeah, um, yeah. I think probably not not as great a need as that. There's the swimming this the swimming hole near my house, lots of broken glass. Um, there, is that a better priority than pulling engines out of the Connecticut? I suspect not. For you. 
For, yeah, well, what, yeah. What, what is remarkable, however, Joyce, yes. is that they do this every year and they continue to find stuff. Find stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but what about around the campground? Is it is it the waterway by the campground? It's pretty dry over there. Is it a brook or something going through there? I, I don't know. I have the assessors so there's up here. I'm thinking because you know, that's what I do. Would they do no. both, or would they? Would this be an either or thing? Because I think the Connecticut River is. I mean, they they weren't they weren't clear. I, I think right. they would want it with some connection to the Connecticut River. Oh, okay. Because I think it's the yeah. Connecticut River Conservancy. But right. all the waterways flow into the Connecticut. Right, the, so, the brooks yeah. and so on. They do so. Oh, that's, right. Yeah, I mean, it's the only one I can think of because it's near my house. But and it's just that people break glass containers there. Yeah. Don't clean up after. Nice. You know, the, the only other thing I could think about is the construction area around the Mill River project from, from several years ago. Did, was anything left there that, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm throwing darts. I think our, our yeah, water department would have been. That's my guess, but. Bring yeah. it down there next. Are there any cars missing? Yeah. 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 Are any cars missing? Oh. All right. All right. Um, so. so the town hall was nominated um, for an award from the Stavros Center for Independent Living. Oh. Um, this, it was nominated last year and we weren't quite done. Um, so Fred and I met, um, Fred, myself, and Neil met um, folks from the Stavros Center there yesterday and they uh -huh. did a walk through the building and really tried it out and it helped us understand sort of how the building operates for people who have limited mobility. Um, so I think it was useful and uh -huh. we'll know if uh, okay. we win an award that, that, or not. And that comes with like Half a million dollars, right? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I was told it's there's a there's a dinner at the lock happening, so okay. they're about equal. Yeah. Yeah. More or less. Um, and safety need. Well, meetings in August are well, at the usual scheduled day. I, do we need two? You're going to be gone. Often in August we we cut it down, down to, one. to one. If we narrow it down to one, I just want to reserve the possibility of needing a to call a quickie meeting. Uh-huh. Concern, my concern, well, I guess I have, to, I have a concern and a question. Uh-huh. My concern is we might need signatures for Poplar Hill Road because um, uh -huh. we're on a 120-day 100 clock from uh -huh. uh, the town meeting. So that pushes up, that pushes it. Uh, oh, okay. We need something done in August for sure. Okay. Any other question is, um, Maybe they won't come, but we're eventually we're going to get more petitions from Eversource. And if those petition, if those petitions are holding up the solar field going on, solar array going online, or or petition that, we want to respond. We want to. Well, today's the thirty-first. If we went by normal two weeks, it would be meeting on the fourteenth and the twenty-eighth. I want. Uh, yeah. Idea. I mean, I'm out of town means I can't sign things, but. I can still, I mean, we did electronic participation in the past, it would be- But I won't be around on the 28th, so. You, you won't be around on the 28th, but, but uh, uh, it, it would mean that Fred would have to chair the meeting. But no, but you, you need to perform here in person. Right, oh, I understand yeah. that. I'm not talking about a specific date. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just talking about, yeah, you know, we, we, we don't have to, like, count me out for all meetings. Right, but the 28th um, won't work. But, uh, the, but the 28th is a date that doesn't work. The 14th, is that a date that is in our 120 day window? From um, our meetings? May, June, July. So I think either the 14th or the 21st would be fine. Good. Let me, let me just look, throw something out looking at looking ahead in September. I'm not available. If we go to 2nd and 4th, I'm not available the 2nd. The 11th? The 11th. Of so September. September, yeah. So does that make a difference in what we do in August? I, I don't know. Or do we need to? Mm -hmm. Wait till September to see. If you well, he was. Uh, Fred was saying that here he is not available for lunch. Oh, so okay. for example, we, we just, did well, the whole week, the whole week, yeah. Yeah. September 9th, I guess. Then. If we if we did a meeting in three weeks from today, that would be the 21st. 21st. And then three weeks from the 20, two weeks from the 21st would be September 4th. That would mean a meeting yeah. earlier in September. Right. Um, and yes. only having one in August. We'll give you the fourth and the twenty fifth in September. Yeah, that would work for me. Or the fourth and yeah, yeah. Uh, September. I'm good on any of those. Yeah, or let's, let's do that. Okay, so, so September is the fourth and twenty fifth, and in August is the twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Okay.
which has Brian available in the days? Yep. Okay. While we're, we're making note of this, have you guys been getting calls from South Deerfield? Yes. Police Department? Is, is this a new service or are we, because our mailing address is South Deerfield, they're on anything. What are the uh, oh, we got a nice call yesterday telling us yeah. about what we should do if the power went down and that there was flooding on uh, this road River or that road. Whatever, yeah. And I was like, well, it, it seemed like it was it should have been going to town of Deerfield residents. Right. Um, and I didn't think of it as being possibly for the post office. Because you're not you're not South Deerfield. That's right. That's right. I and am, and I so am, I don't yeah. know. But, but for my po oh, no for post office, yeah, I am South Deerfield. Oh, you are. I am RFD South Deerfield. Yeah. So oh. getting it to South Deerfield. There was um, one about two prices. Weeks. They delivered to my house. Yeah. That's they deliver. Uh, yeah. But there was another phone call about two weeks ago. Right. There was a yeah. So I've got two all together. Yeah. I don't get it. So I must do that because I'm Waitley Center. I don't see. I don't know. I'm not bothered by getting them. Yeah, I'm not either. Because they're not out every day. But yeah. yeah. But it, they, so far, I've not abused it. So. Well, regionalized. I, I don't know if they, they go like you. They go by <laughs> mailing address or South Deerfield. They're looking at. I don't know how they would have gotten my phone number other than. I, it's on every public access slide. Yellow pa white pages on white online, pages. probably. Yeah. White pages okay. online. Um, okay. Okay. Are we done? I okay. would uh, um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Done. I think we're done. All right. Good. Okay.